Today, we're getting caught up on the world of craft drama and talking about some recent controversy going down in both the knitting and ceramics communities. The first situation involves a knitting influencer who's been getting backlash for attacking a fan on their Instagram story. After this, we'll go over the Australian mug drama and how a TikTok influencer complained about buying a $125 strawberry mug, which led to the creator of the mug calling out the influencer in their own video. Then we'll wrap things up by talking about the knitting drama involving Sock Obsession Yarns, who is getting a lot of pushback online for blocking other community members on Instagram, claiming industry professionals are stealing and selling their ideas. And I pulled together all of the details for these three stories. So by the end of the video, you can get caught up with all of the drama going on in the craft world. But if it's your first time here, hi, I'm Austin. I make videos staying caught up with the latest internet drama and news. So if that sounds like your thing, feel free to stick around and subscribe to catch the next story. I can finally share the first of two announcements I've been sitting on. The second big announcement will be in next week's video. But now I can finally tell you, I was actually able to quit my nine to five job. And after this week, I'll be making videos for you full time. Thank you so much for choosing to watch over the past six months. I really can't explain just how much my life has changed just because of you deciding to follow the channel. Thank you again. I'm looking forward to sharing more of my upcoming plans next week. Today's video ideas were sent to me by a handful of different people. If you come across an idea that you think I should cover in a future video, feel free to send it to me on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. And if you happen to use Twitch, drop a follow there if you want to catch my going full-time celebration stream. Now, let's just get into it. The first situation involves Riri Nitz on Instagram, who started getting pushback on January 19th after making these two posts on her story. The first post is a response to a DM she received from a fan. The DM reads, Hey there, I will knit a bonnet like yours with the two hearts for a friend of mine. We'll obviously not sell it. And I do know that you don't sell your patterns, but I wanted to know if I could still send you a bit of money just as a thank you for the inspiration slash idea. And Riri Nitz responds, a reminder that I am not okay with people coping my designs. I find it really disrespectful, especially when people don't ask and they just tell me they are doing it. It's so entitled. I've said this before, just because other knitwear designers sell their motifs and patterns doesn't mean I have to, and it doesn't mean you are entitled to them. If I wanted your money, I would sell my patterns. I think the fact I don't should be a clear message that I don't want my work replicated. There are many reasons for this, and I don't have to explain myself. Jeez, who hurt you? This is just that meme where somebody asks you where you got that food, and then you're like, I find MS like you real interesting, bro. After this post, Riri Nitz followed up with another story. The sad thing is that I know this person thinks they're being nice by messaging me and offering me money to copy my work, but it's not nice. It's upsetting, and it makes me not want to share my work online. I don't think there's a way of changing this. It's just the way craft and knitting is seen. There is an attitude of, well, if I can make it myself, then I'm entitled to do so. However, you didn't design it or spend weeks sampling. There are so many designers happily selling their patterns. Please go buy their patterns and support them and respect the designers that don't offer this. These stories were heavily criticized on Reddit by community members in this post titled, Apparently taking inspiration from knitting is disrespectful. And after receiving criticism for their statements, Riri Knits uploaded this to their story the next day. Deleted my previous stories as I received over 20 hate messages saying stuff like I'm entitled, my designs are basic, and I have no right to tell people not to make them. Messages like I should die from the flu and never knit again. I'm a bully for sharing someone's message on my story. And if someone can't afford my work, they are entitled to make it. Lots of those messages. Anyways, I haven't posted in a while because I really hate social media. I'm not going to stop sharing my work, but mainly because I need to make a living. From now on, I won't share my opinions. I will just share my drops and when I have commission spaces. I will also no longer accept message requests. I stand by what I say, but I don't really fancy receiving more hate messages. Social media is a weird, dark place. You can't even have an opinion or stand up for yourself without someone telling you to die. I love when someone's willing to dish out the harshest criticism, but as soon as there's any pushback, they run the whole victim script of, I'm never posting my opinions again, social media is just so messed up. But later the same day, another Reddit post was made about Riri Nitz titled, Hypocrisy at its finest. 
and attached are screenshots of two stories shared by Riri Nitz back in December. In the first image, they respond to a fan asking how they get inspired. I get a lot of inspiration from vintage designs and knitwear, as well as children's wear. I often see kids' clothing and think, I wish this came in my size. I'm also inspired by a lot of anime and luxury fashion designs. A few of my favorite designers are Ashley Williams, Sandy Leong, Mark Jacobs, Chushu Tong, Gucci, Meadham Kirchhoff, to name a few. And in the second image, showing a story posted one day later, someone asks, do you sell your Intarsia charts? And Riri Nitz responds, no, I don't plan to either. I get asked a lot if I would be okay with people copying my motifs for items they are knitting themselves. I think this is a good opportunity to talk about this. I always appreciate people asking, but it's always a no. It's not nice when your work is copied, whatever the craft or discipline. I think as lots of designers do sell their patterns and graphs, there is a blurry line of ownership with knitwear, where people sometimes feel entitled to be able to make something they love. I think it's really important to respect designers that choose not to sell their patterns and not copy them. All right, it's kind of wild to claim somebody's not allowed to make something they see online, even when they're not planning on selling it. The way people get better at making art is by copying things they like until they can make something unique. As long as somebody's not straight up making money off of your work, who even cares? I thought imitation was the sincerest form of flattery. Well, following this, Riri Nitz went quiet online for the next two and a half weeks before returning with this post on February 5th. But that pretty much gets us caught up on everything we know regarding the drama surrounding Riri Nitz. Now, let's get into the messy situation that is the Australian $125 strawberry mug drama, which involves two Australian TikTok creators named Soph and Shelby. Around the end of November 2023, Shelby announced on TikTok that she'd be at a craft festival in Sydney, Australia during the second weekend of December. Soph ended up going to this festival and purchased a mug from Shelby's booth. A month goes by, then on January 31st, Soph posted this video. Specifically there for yet, but like I'll figure it out. This, I actually have no idea who I'm going to give this to. Basically, I was at this market, the Finder Ke Finders Keepers Market. How can you use this cup, right? I think it's actually like a kid sippy cup, which is silly because it's ceramic, so if they drop it, it'll smash. But I didn't say that. I thought it just had one handle. I was like, oh, that's such a cute mug. Like, I'm just going to get it. Like, I was like, whatever, like, I'll just get it. Didn't ask how much it was. She's like, yep, yeah, that's all good. You can tap. It's a hundred. She's like, oh no, she's like, it's all good. You can tap. Look at the F Boss machine, $125. Look how small this mug is. Like, it's literally tiny. That's like a proper mug size. I was like, she like fully wrapped it and put it in a bag, and like I was about to tap. So I was like, there's no way I can be like, no, I could have, but I would have felt really bad. So I just got it, but now I'm like, fuck, do I give this to? I'm not gonna give this to actually one of my cousins that's small because they'll just break it. It's so breakable. It's like hand ceramic, hand ceramic, you know? So I don't know who the fuck that's for, but we'll figure it out. Sorry, but. How are you going to post your L like that? That hand ceramic mug is tiny. And you paid what? 125 Australian dollars for that? In freedom dollars, that's still 82 bucks. You could have bought like 15 $5 cravings boxes from Taco Bell. But soon after Soph uploaded this video, despite her not even mentioning the brand's name, Shelby posted a response video. So I just saw this video and that's my mug. That was only a short little clip of the whole minute that she talks about how I spoke to her as a business at the market. She goes on to thank her for coming to the festival, then explains how hard she works making her mugs. Every single time someone purchases a piece that I make, I have literally spent hours and hours finessing, glazing. I hand paint every single one. And that's not including how much money goes towards tax, how much goes towards GST, how much outgoings I have, all my supplies that have also increased in value. It also includes my staff's wages. After this, she goes into detail about her feelings regarding Soph's video. Also deeply upsetting to have someone not only question you as a business owner and lie about how I interacted with you, but to also have you question my pricing when you too also run a small business and you know how much goes into every single little thing that small business does. Shelby also talks about how many people at the festival were excited that Soph was going to show up. 
The thing that's also upsetting is that you came to the Find Your Keepers market and do you know what? We were all so excited. Even the market organizers were so excited that you came to the market and you were potentially going to shout out this wonderful event that supports small, local, creative businesses. Then she explains what happened from her point of view during her interaction with Soph. When I spoke to you, I actually recognized you because you'd just been nominated for a TikTok award. And I said, hey, how awesome. Congratulations on your TikTok award. I then explained to you, like I explained to every single person that came to my store over that weekend, that all the prices were placed on the bottom and you can pick up, handle, you don't have to purchase anything. You can just enjoy my store because I get it. Times are tough right now. I don't want to put you in a financial situation. I want to have a living wage and I want to support my workers here. I want to be able to continue doing this and doing it for a very long time. Okay, I doubt she actually said all of that. Like imagine doing that whole spiel every time a customer walks by the booth. I watched you pick things up and look at the prices. You picked up a number of pieces of that strawberry collection because it's freaking cute. It's so cute. And then I showed you other pieces that I had left because they were so popular. I barely had any of them left. And I showed you and I even told you the price of them. After that, you handed me the mug that you're going to go. And I was like, awesome pick. And I asked you, like I asked everyone that weekend, whether you would like tissue paper or a bit more padding because I wanted to make sure that the piece was safe wherever they were traveling to that day. And I didn't wrap it until I had an answer. And I, then I gave you the FPOS machine to tap your card. It was literally your choice. And I wouldn't have wrapped it until I knew that you had, you had responded that you wanted that piece. Yeah, this sounds like a normal customer interaction. I'm guessing Soph mostly made up her end of the story after she pulled the mug out of a bag of stuff she bought and then noticed the price tag on the bottom. But at the same time, Shelby should make a bigger mug for $125. Like what? Am I supposed to do shots out of my strawberry mug? Shelby wraps up the video by offering Soph a refund. If you would like, you can send me an email and we can organize you returning the mug to me and I can issue you a full refund of the money that you paid for that piece and I can find someone else that will really, really love and appreciate that mug. In particular, that mug is really special because it may look like just a sippy cup to you, but it actually falls under the dignity mug category where it has a double handle to help people that have different needs and different disabilities that require to handle mugs to handle their cup. Anyway, thank you um, for supporting my business regardless. Uh, and thank you to anyone that's bought one of my pieces. It, um, it means the world to me. So thank you. Yeah, don't you feel bad now, Soph? Making fun of the mug's two handles when this whole time it was for people with disabilities? How dare you? Nah, I'm just joking. It's probably an honest mistake. But soon after Shelby posted her response, Soph uploaded another video in response to that. I am making this video because I am so confused. I just went on my TikTok to see comments in my comment section saying, why would you lie to harm a small business? And I was like, whoa, what is happening? So I went to my tagged videos and I saw this video. It's like a two minute video of this girl saying that I slammed her small business and I said that her pieces weren't worth the price. Basically, I went to the Finders Keepers Market in Sydney on my birthday and I went and I bought a few things. I then did a haul and I showed in the haul this like mug that I got. This is my experience. I remember going to the Finest Keepers Market, looking at this store and being like, this is so cute. I walk up, there was like a little like, um, like barricade thing you had to like line up because the store was really popular. So I stood in the line, I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited a while, got to the front and I just wanted to have a look at some things. On my mum's life, I did not touch any items. I looked at all the items and I remember talking to a girl who had long, dark brunette hair. Maybe I'm wrong, but I swear I remember having long, dark brunette hair. And I remember seeing the mug and thinking it was really cute. When I looked at the mug, I couldn't see that it had two handles, but I wouldn't have bought it. But I thought it had one handle. If, like, she's claiming in the video, which I don't even know if it's, if, if it is, if it even is her business in the video, because I don't remember her looking like that. Okay, not to roast Soph, but I don't think she's very perceptive. How do you pay $125 for something, but you didn't even look at it close enough? to notice it as two handles. She claims that she didn't touch anything, then grabbed the mug and bought it immediately after without looking at anything else, including the mug, apparently. 
she said that I was picking up the items, playing with them, like not playing with them, but looking at them, looking at the price. Why would I lie about this? Why would I make a TikTok saying that I had no idea what the price was if I knew the price? That's not even what Shelby said in her video. What she actually said is that she told Soph the prices of the mugs she was showing her and explained that the prices were listed on the bottom of each product. I honestly don't think Soph knows really what's going on at all. She just watched the video once and started yapping. Basically, I see the mug, I think it's really cute, I thought it had one handle, and I was like, oh, I'll get that, right? I didn't realize, I didn't know the price until I tapped my card. I saw that it said $125, and I thought, in my personal opinion, I thought, whoa, I didn't expect it to be that much for a little mug. Not saying that the price, I never said anything in the video that the price wasn't worth that, that it was not deserving of that price, like the piece wasn't worth that price. Never said anything. It was a little comment about how I didn't know it was that much money until I tapped my card. Still bought it. Didn't even know it had two handles because I didn't see it. Like I just saw it from an angle where I obviously thought it had one handle. Okay, I'll say it. $125 for any mug is not worth it. In this economy, in this economy, but also, how stupid do you have to be to tap your card to pay for something without looking at the price? Again, stop posting your L's. Sorry, I'm being far more snarky in this video because I'm finally covering people that won't sue me. She is now making this video saying that I was picking it up. I looked at the price on the bottom. I looked at the price of a few things. She's telling me that she talked me through the price and that she talked me through the whole strawberry collection. This did not happen. I don't know why people feel like they can make videos saying my name and just throwing absolute lies in there to get views because the video has so many views. The video has so many likes. The video has so many comments slamming me. Of course, all my haters are going to run at that and just take that. Like people just take things like take things with a grain of salt this did not happen even if it did in the video i didn't even say anything bad all i said was that i didn't know it had two handles and i was shocked because i didn't expect it to be that expensive god bloody shoot me like oh my god i don't understand why things get blown out of proportion so much and why people think they can just throw my name into things and lie because it gets really exhausting when every day there is a new scandal coming up with my name in it just so people can get views okay all Shelby did was make a response to Soph's video, which was making fun of her handmade mug. Like, cut her a little slack. And she's not trying to get clout from Soph. She literally has more followers. And is Australian TikTok clout even real? I recently found out they have less people than Texas. Because it just didn't happen. I remember her having long brunette hair. Even if whatever, even if she dyed her hair, whatever, and that is her. She didn't talk me through the strawberry collection. She didn't show me the mug. Because I can assure you, if I picked up the mug, I would have said, I'll leave it. Because why would I get that mug with two handles? Like, it just doesn't make sense. And I'm sick. This is why I'm making this video. Because usually I would just leave it and just let people, like, trash my name. But I'm sick of people using my name to get views for shit when it's not true. And I'm sick of just sitting back and listening to it. So that's my two cents. How is Soph now claiming that she never touched the mug or looked at it before they rang it up? I think the story doesn't make sense to her because she just doesn't remember what happened. And she is just lying about the business now, saying that they forced this purchase on her when there's just no world where that happened. And if she just blindly tapped her card without looking at the price, that's literally her own fault. You don't have to do that. Nobody's making you do that. Do with that what you will. You have a beautiful brand. I never said anything about the pieces not being deserving of that price. All I said was that I was shocked by the price, still paid for it because I was awkward and I wasn't going to be like, oh, I'm not going to get that. Like I was awkward. I still want to support this small business. God forbid that I make a little comment on a TikTok. Yeah, not exactly a PR friendly response. Maybe just try being understanding instead of playing the victim the entire time. But regardless, this back and forth between Soph and Shelby started a wave of discussion online about who's in the right and who's in the wrong, with internet detectives going through the archives and finding Instagram posts of the booth set up during the interaction. Some people were initially claiming that all the strawberry stuff was on the back shelf, but others found photos of the exact mug that Soph bought sitting front and center. Following this, news outlets started picking up the story along with some of my favorite creators like Em in the Moment and Anna Marie Forcino. But that's pretty much everything that happened surrounding the Australian $125 strawberry mug drama. Finally, let's get to our last controversy, which involves more drama within the knitting community. And it all started on January 30th with the creator Sock Obsession Yarns, 
who was called out on Reddit after causing constant drama on Instagram. The attached images share a screenshot of a recent post from Sock Obsession Yarns, where they share an email that somebody sent to them that says, you seriously blocked me for asking what dye you use for your yarn. F you, you crazy a-hole B. See if I buy any of your products now. In the caption, they write, uncomfortable topic, and I've been avoiding it for a couple of years now. I've been repeatedly asked on social media where I source my yarn, materials, equipment, dyes, etc. Also asked and even threatened to give out my recipes and procedures how I create my colorways. Bottom line, I shouldn't have to explain to anyone why I am hesitant to give out my own recipes and work I created myself. It's been years and years of trial and error and lots of ruined yarn and dyes. And it's definitely been emotional and exhausting experience. And the journey isn't complete by any means. I still have so much to learn. However, occasionally I witness a very intense and negative responses to my refusal to give out the information about my work. I don't offer any how to dye yarn tutorials, nor am I planning on offering them. Sorry to disappoint. If that's why you follow my account, I'm afraid you won't see much of that content. However, I'm sure you can find that stuff on YouTube or read up in the books. For example, hand dyeing yarn and fleece Callahan. To give you a glimpse and fraction of the responses to my no, I won't share this information. Here are a few examples. The photo two and three, the emails I received after I had to block the individual on my Instagram page. After this person kept spamming each and every post of mine with repeated requests saying, where do you buy yarn and dyes? So I deleted about 25 of those comments and blocked the account. Then the emails followed. The last one is example of the once my customer who approximately two to three weeks after receiving their order of fairy witchcraft and bioluminescence colorway became suddenly yarn dyer themselves and posted their brand new colorways. Judge for yourself. Hope that this all makes more sense now. Thank you for reading. After this, on February 2nd, even more critics commented on Reddit regarding these statements, with some saying that they don't have copyright protection over colors, and others defending their right to block whoever they want. Around the same time, Sock Obsession Yarns posted this on Facebook. Just a brief update, I have temporarily deactivated my Instagram page. I will keep it offline for at least a day or two. I've received several death threats against me and my family. While I deal with law enforcement regarding this, hopefully you can enjoy the yarn directly on my website and here on Facebook. I am available for any order inquiries through my contact form on the website still. This much to the loving yarn community, I'd say. Thank you for your understanding. In the comments of the post, someone writes, I don't think it's the yarn community doing this. And they respond, it's several other dyers, which I have blocked for valid reasons. And they are unhappy about the fact that I won't allow them access to me or my work. It's literally that. There are screenshots that show which dyers actually even started this smear campaign. And they go on to share screenshots of these emails. A couple days later on February 4th, Sock Obsession Yarns continues the drama with another Facebook post calling out a former customer. This is what I got to see this morning. This is not my account or my image. This is a former customer of mine based in UK who bought skein of each colorway from me. Fairy witchcraft, bioluminescence, just to name a few. I'm not sure how I feel about this. What are your thoughts? My thoughts personally are, who freaking cares? Why are you so insecure about the color of your yarn? If you don't want people to be inspired by you, stop posting all of your product online. Nobody likes the person that always has to compete with everybody. And Sock Obsession Yarn's switch from playing the victim to now bullying other community members was quickly called out on Reddit. The following day, another user posted on Reddit asking, who is Treehouse Knits talking about? They linked to a video uploaded by Treehouse Knits on Instagram, which has now been removed. But this comment replying to the post sums up the situation pretty well. Last week, Sock Obsession shared a post on Instagram that included emails from someone who was apparently hounding them for information on how to dye yarn. The emails were aggressive and threatening, and SO said they blocked this person on Instagram. 
In the post, Esso says the person was blocked after harassing and also, in Esso's opinion, copying their colorways. Some other indie dyers, including Treehouse Knits, realized they were blocked by Esso and asked why in public stories. Esso then posted that they block people in order to preserve their artistic space and not be influenced by anyone else's work and that this is what they were taught in art school. An indie dyer with 700 followers at the time, two SO's 40k followers, DM'd SO sharing about their experience with indie dyer community and how it has been helpful as they are just getting started. And SO said they had been threatened and bullied by the community. The indie dyer did say they wished SO luck in finding professional help, which may not have been in kindness at the time. Esso starts commenting on Instagram about other dyers being talentless and needing access to Esso's posts to steal from Esso, and that's why Esso blocks other indie dyers. After this, Esso deactivates Instagram and goes to Facebook sharing. They are getting threats and getting police involved. In the comments, someone says it is probably not the indie dyer community sending death threats to Esso. Esso specifically names the Indie Dyer and Treehouse Knits and claims the Indie Dyers are starting a smear campaign against Esso. Esso shares some of their emails, which are the same email screenshots from the post they made on Instagram about the person harassing them for dye instructions. And the next day, on February 6, Sock Obsession Yarns responded to Treehouse Knits in their own Instagram post. This is my first time ever speaking on social media. My statement to the current events. Please skip this if you don't care for online drama. I understand that Treehouse Knits makes claims of me contacting her followers or somehow harassing her. None of that is true. As you already likely know, shortly after these physical threats, I decided to temporarily deactivate my Instagram account. I deactivated on Friday and kept it offline until Sunday. She remained blocked on my account anyway. I was focusing in meantime on my orders and managing anxiety caused by all this. I've done several statements on my Facebook on Friday and Saturday, letting everyone know what's happening and that my IG is deactivated. The only time I contacted anyone was me responding to the DM from Sincere Fiber Co., who I believe is her follower, and was the first to attack me on Friday with the repost of the Treehouse Knits IG story. That's the DM where Sincere Fiber Co. told me I need professional help. I have never done this before, been avoiding speaking on social media for the longest time. I wanted to let the whole event run its course. However, there are new accusations and are absolutely not aligned with facts or what really did occur. So I would like to say what is really happening. There are two sides to the story. Let's get the facts on the table. I apologize for the accent, as you probably know that English isn't my first language, but hopefully you can understand the message. Thank you for listening. They also included hashtag statement and hashtag speaking facts. A fan commented on the post saying, keep doing you and ignore the haters. That kind of fuel burns hot, but burns out fast. Keep up the good positive flow and keep creating beautiful yarns. And they replied, unfortunately, I cannot ignore the hate she's spreading about me because it's a slander and it's ruining my reputation. She keeps feeling the whole drama despite me asking to de-escalate. Her followers are also on the roll. It's terrifying how one individual is capable of damage of such magnitude. But at this point, we're pretty much caught up on everything surrounding the Sock Obsession Yarns drama which ended up being pretty similar to the Riri Knits situation we talked about at the beginning. For some reason, people in the knitting community just hate it whenever somebody likes something you make and then gets inspired by it. Because apparently all their fans should just be their customers and buy all their stuff instead of becoming an artist themselves. Regardless, we're now caught up on some of the crazy drama going on in the craft world. The first situation involved Riri Knits, who got backlash after calling out a fan that simply thanked them for inspiration. The second situation covered the Australian $125 strawberry mug drama and how two TikTok creators got in a messy back and forth with the entire internet watching. And the third situation involving Sock Obsession Yarns, who received criticism online after calling out other community members for potentially stealing ideas and blocking them on Instagram. 
But now that you know pretty much everything about this recent craft drama, I need to know, what do you think about everything? Was Riri Nitz in the wrong for the way she called out a fan? Who do you think's really telling the truth regarding this $125 strawberry mug drama? And do you think Sock Obsession Yarns is in the right for starting all of this drama? Let me know all that and anything I missed down in the comments. If you want to stay caught up with even more internet drama and news, subscribe to catch the next story and check out any of my recent videos. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end. I'm excited to share an even bigger announcement in next week's video. So check it out if you want to hear the news and I'll see you in the next one.